Gail Gerald, do you think you would actually have a website put together by the New York Bar Association in Albany, New York, on Robert Jackson, based solely on the book by you? That now goes to every bar lawyer in New York City. I haven't seen that. I better go look. Oh, yeah. They have taken your book as the template, and they have created a website for teachers, students, and have really peeled it back. And that all came as a result of a meeting we had last year about this time here, where the New York State Bar Association came as part of the essay contest and said, what are you going to do next year? We'll have the book, da 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 And I think we had the, maybe the galley sheets. Mm -hmm. They took it. Uh, they engaged a webmaster who was a lawyer who dug into it, and it's all over. Wow. So is it lesson plans that are focused on the book? Yeah, fourth grade, eighth grade, okay. grade I s I modules. I th think I saw those. Yeah. I think I saw them in a different format, but I didn't know that it was online now. It's online, so you can click on Coral Mod, so you can click on Barnett, so if you want to go through that next layer, it's unbelievable. And links, and links, to, links to other places. Exactly. Oh, great. The, the Avalon Project, among others. That's great. Uh, so I think teachers are so busy, they really need things to be ready to use. You know, to have something like that all set up, then they can just go right to it, and it's ready for their kids. What's just, what ha has this book had any impact on your, your career, the next book, the interest in Gail Jarrow? Have you seen any, any bounce? Well, certainly good for my career because the book got well reviewed, mm -hmm. was chosen as one of the best young adult books by Kirkus. Mm -hmm. um, so of course that's good for me in terms of having my name connected to a book that did very well. And the reviews were, were good in that recognized the amount of research that I did. So that's important to me as a writer, that people know that I really do good research. Right. But I don't think of it, you know, I'm really interested in um, how now people know who Jackson is that didn't know who Jackson was before. And that also comes through in the reviews. You know, the reviews are done by librarians or um, educators mm -hmm. primarily. And for them to say, well, this is somebody about whom there has been very little written and it was time that something was written about him. I think that's, that's a great thing. Yeah. What about your colleagues? Who uh, do they read? Do your colleagues read your stuff and <laughs> comment on it? Do you get any feedback from that other than you know, the reviewers? But you're, you know, you're in a cadre of people who are writers for you. Of course, readers. they say nice things to my face, right? <laughs> I, you know, people are interested in it. You know, yeah. people are interested in what I what I wrote, and um, I'm in a writers group in Ithaca, and people ask about. They were interested in how I did the research for it, and we have discussions about how to write nonfiction. You know, nonfiction writing for young readers—it's um, it, a—it's a tricky thing, and there is a lot out there that's not well done. Mm -hmm. A lot of inaccuracies, not good editing. I have a great editor, Carolyn Yoder. Um, I mean, she's a historian herself. Um, so there's a lot of people that just run books off and they're not good right. and they're not doing a service to students because they're not full of good information and accurate information. So among people that really care about writing nonfiction, um, research is important. And, and it shows. One of the things that your book has triggered is a lot of interest here in Chautauqua, Cattaraugus, Warren County. We've had lawyers buy four or five hundred books to pass out to school systems. I don't know if you've kept track of what's going on here, but no, that's wonderful. That's um, great. You know, we've pushed out of just this place over five thousand books, which to me that seems remarkable to uh, the Chautauqua, Cattaraugus. Uh, corporations have bought it, distributed their employees just because they're interested in what's going on here locally. Also, lent order out of some of the things we're doing here because we got a grant from the state 
hopefully it'll be fulfilled, uh, to <laughs> do any, you know, the permanent Jackson exhibit. Well, now the folks who are planning that exhibit, the professional dis displayers, they have taken your book because they want to. We want to permanently show Jackson's life here. Well, what are we showing here? Read the book. It's you It's being used a lot. That's great. And I think you've probably seen the lesson plans and the, the teacher's guide and the reader's guide from the uh, Fredonia College, mm -hmm. the booklets. Yes. Yeah. Um, and the Teaching American History has done a similar thing, and that's to me. I'll tell you now, if I may not get a chance publicly, but uh, that when you think about what's happened in a year for the Jackson Center, very selfishly, we never had a good answer to the question, tell me more. Mm -hmm. Your book provides the answer. And from that book has spawned three things that are very tangible. Fredonia's work, teaching American history work, and now the New York State Bar Association website. And people have done that without encouragement in the sense that, you know, here's a book, it'd be great if you did something, and they knew they had to do something with the book. So as a teacher, you, you got to, I'm, I'm thrilled for you, and hopefully uh, it's a nice byproduct. It is certainly a nice byproduct because, you know, as a writer, I'm not writing just for myself. I want people to read what I've done. And, and you know, i put a lot of research and time into finding out about Jackson, and my whole goal is to communicate what's inside me to other people. So when I hear that you're getting the book into so many hands, that's great. I mean that, and and also that it's not just kids; that it you know, also adults are reading it. Oh yeah. Um, that's very gratifying. You know, I <laughs> my my aunt used to teach history, uh, and my mother both read the book, and you know they lived through this. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, I'd forgotten about that, and I didn't know about that. And that made me feel good, because when I wrote the book, there's a lot of context. There's a lot of historical context, because I was writing with young people in mind, and I knew they wouldn't be up on all these historical eras. Um, but to hear that my mother and aunt didn't even remember it. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess it was good that I put all that into the book. Well, we get a number of folks who comment that this is not a young reader's book, because it's for really though it's maybe designed and written and for lang with language for eighth graders, that means everybody, that's right. the common folks. And mm -hmm. uh, we had the Masonic Order bought 100 of them, passed them around to all of their infirm uh. friends, and they all came back, oh, this is a great book, we're going to eat because we can read it, we can understand it, what do you mean it's eighth grade? They were offended. You know, <laughs> yeah, don't tell them. It's not young readers, it's for us, <laughs> us folks. What's Kent's reaction to all of this? Oh, I, I'm sure he's happy because it's selling books. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, were, there, were there expectations when, at I, 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 some point, I'm sure Kent or maybe Carolyn got a hold of you. And so that initial phone call that came to you saying, we think this might be of interest to you, how did that happen? Um, okay, well, they obviously had spoken to you and thought Jackson was somebody worth writing about. And I had just finished a book for them. Uh, on John Peter Zanger's Freedom of the Press trial. Um, and because I had written a book about a legal issue and I was in that mode, um, they thought of me. And also because I live in New York State. Um, and they thought it would you know, be convenient. I could come here and talk to you and see what was here at the Jackson Center. So they asked me, and I said, OK, I'll think about it. I mean, when your publisher comes to you and says, <laughs> would you like to write a book about this? You're going to say, yeah, I, I, that might be a great idea. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know a lot about Jackson, and I had to do some research on my own just to scratch the surface, mm -hmm. to find out what was there. And is this a character that I can write about and make a compelling book about? Um, is his life, is there enough there to write a biography? Mm -hmm. And there sure was. <laughs> so I could see that just on very preliminary reading, that there was quite a lot to, to delve into. And I didn't know when I said, yes, I'll do this, I didn't know how the book was going to turn out. Because Kent said to me, you do however you think this would work. If you think this would be a picture book, that's OK, whatever. 
and right away because of the subject matter, because um, to understand Jackson, you do have to have a sense of history. I knew that it was going to be at least middle school and older, mm -hmm. and Carolyn agreed with that. Um, so I had that framework, and she and I talked about a few things with biography, and she's the one that also emphasized I needed to include context, mm -hmm. historical context, because kids wouldn't have that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I came here, and I spoke to you and others. Um, I went home with a lot of your archives uh, to look through, and that was great and really got me going. Uh, also, I came home with a lot of uh, leads uh, to Columbia, to the oral history project, and to the papers, Jackson's papers at Library of Congress. So you got me going, and I knew, you know, I knew where I was going to be doing the research. So it really, the book, it all fell into place once I started to find out and read all this information about Jackson. This, the plot line, and it's, you know, when you write a biography, there's a plot line to it. Mm -hmm. It all, you know, it all just came together. As you look at it today, and you know, here you're, you've been done with the book literally for more than a year in the sense of writing it. Uh, about, yeah, about a year. And as things come up and do you reflect on what it is you didn't put in? Oh, what may have hit the of editing course. Point? Yeah. <laughs> even when I was writing it, I knew there were there was so much I couldn't put in. Yeah. I mean, I didn't even mention his Mason's connection. I just could not get into that. Um, there's very, you know, the discussion of his legal career in Jamestown is short and superficial because I knew I was writing it um, with a bigger historical view, and I had to spend more time on the things that were nationally important. So, of course, a, a really perfect biography would have much, much more about that, for example. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing the research at the Library of Congress, um, and I got into his papers, there was just so much. I, I didn't have enough time to do as much as I wanted to. But just the personal stuff, you know, and John Barrett maybe doesn't pay attention to this, I don't know, but this is what interests me. You know, I'm reading these personal letters because that's where there's a lot of uh, a lot of gems about Jackson as a person and the way he related to people in his family and his friends. This handwritten notes, the the letters that he knew no he thought no one would ever see, mm -hmm. um, where the guards down and you're seeing the real Jackson. To me, that was intriguing and that was I love that and I could have <laughs> spent a lot more time getting getting into all that. Is there a postscript to this? For me to write? John Jackson? Um, I don't even know what form it would take. It's kind of like Musings musings on <laughs> Jackson by Gail Gerald, you know? Um, I don't know. I mean, it, you know, of course it's it's a, it's a business. Oh, sure. I mean, writing's a business, so I don't even know if it would be something that would be marketable. Yeah, I, I don't either. So, I, I there's... There's personal interests that I take, and I, you know, I still have them in my Google alert, <laughs> and I, Good. I. In fact, if you saw the Google alert just minutes ago, you're in the Buffalo. News I today. saw that. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm still interested in it, and I'm paying attention. But as far as writing another book, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, well. Well, what would what would be if somebody wanted to pick up that mantle? What would be your instructions to the next person who says, "All right, Gail Jarrows, I've done it, done as well as I can. I've now moved on to some other exciting things." But all right, God bless you, Eric Larson. If Eric Larson said, "I mm -hmm. want to pick it up," what would be what would be your advice to him? Well, see, he would come at it from a different point of view. He would come at it from a legal point of view, uh, and I didn't really get into that very much because I'm not an attorney, and I don't, I'm not. I don't have as much understanding of the law as somebody who went to law school and could look at Jackson in a different way and would look at Jackson in a different way. And I look at him as a person. Um, I'm looking at the personality, the character, what he accomplished, but it's a little different. So I guess it would depend on who was writing the book. 
that may be a question you get in here in April. Uh, you know, we've added an extra session. There's so many kids. Why? Oh, oh yeah. Well, it's it's they got something in the afternoon of the twenty. Oh, the first day. Yeah, first okay. day, which we've never done. You know, we've had some pretty good hit, big hitters in Spinelli and Lowry, and oh wow. And now we got Gerald. And <laughs> That's company to be in. I'll tell you. <laughs> it's uh, no, just it's a compliment. It's a compliment mm. to you and, and uh, the product because we've stirred up so much interest here locally you know that's nice but of course it's Jackson I mean with books um, a lot of people can write but the subject matter really matters and Jackson as a topic as a subject uh, is what captures people's interest well, it, it has here and that wouldn't have happened nobody's done it but mm -hmm. until you so uh, being being the first in the pot I was lucky yeah I was very lucky Last night, we had an event in Westfield, and James O'Brien, who you may meet tonight, who put together this exhibit on Torje. Ah. Um, but he was reminding me that I was asked to be a lecturer in Westfield in 2002 at Lincoln Days. Just on Jackson. Sort of a fill in the blank. We had an hour to kill, so it's great because you. Well, that's when Kent was in the audience. Oh. That heard the speech because James had asked me to speak. Which then rippled through a you know a long litany of things that Kent not only came down here he kicked the tires he sent down a squad of people one year another squad another year Carolyn Yoder another I mean it was like the ultimate due diligence until finally you know Carolyn well, so it goes all the way back yeah. wow well last night was just interesting and I said how wonderful it because I he gave a presentation on Torje and I did an interview with him uh, so here it is Westfield. It's just the circle is complete today, just within 24 hours. So hopefully he'll be here tonight. Oh, I hope so. Uh, for teachers, yeah, because yeah, you're in this business, uh, what are the pieces of the Jackson biography which are the teachable moments? You know, whether it's the, uh, the English piece, whether it's the constitutional piece, the international law piece, uh, in your world, what, because this is important, frankly, for our strategic planning, what, what are those moments that are grabbable on a, on a global basis? I mean, is it the well, um, I've spoken to teachers of history and English. A lot of times it seems to be the English teachers that are taking the book and using it, which I thought was interesting. Um, because they use it in a study of biography, and they use it because um, I guess maybe they're using it also to, to as a way to teach research skills and nonfiction writing, mm -hmm. because that's part of the curriculum that's important mm -hmm. for kids to learn to do. So they are using that as a model and as a way of teaching those sub that subject. And then history teachers, of course, are using it uh, as a supplement to teaching about things like the Depression and New Deal mm -hmm. and the war, World War II, and, um, and they're also using it because of the Brown v. Board of Ed piece um, to talk about the Civil Rights era and Nuremberg, of course. So always with, with students, my experience as a teacher, when I was a teacher, history is always better if it's personality mm -hmm. focused because if it's just a lot of dates and events, it doesn't really sink in. But if you can find a way to present history through people, kids absorb it better. It's more interesting. I mean, we're all interested in people. Um, you see this with, with now Lincoln's, all the celebration of Lincoln's um, birth. Again, people are using that as a way to teach about the Civil War and history and, and all of that, but they're focusing on Lincoln because we're drawn to that as an individual. So Jackson, this is one of the reasons when Kent and Carolyn talked to me about this, I thought Jackson was great as a topic, as a person to write a biography because he did live through all of these periods that are so important in the 20th century. And by focusing on him and his role in the Roosevelt administration and then with Nuremberg and with the war, World War II, uh, it's just a way to, to pull kids into this and put a face on it, so it's just not a date. Uh, it's exciting. And I, I think I told you, I, I did email you about 
Justice Scalia. Did I tell you about that? No, no, no. Because um, I went to the National Press Club book fair with a book. And Justice Scalia was there because he has a book out. Right. And they put me, they put us kind of in the same area. And he was there, and I thought, I'm going to go up and talk to him. Why not, right? Absolutely. And so I went up to him, and he has a bodyguard and all that right. stuff. But he was very nice, and I thanked him for signing the book and sending it back to the Jackson Center. And he said, I, you know, I, Jackson's one of my favorite justices. Then I was at my position with the book, and he came by to take his position, and he had Roger Mudd with him. Oh, wow. And Roger Mudd's like pointing at the book. So, you know, it's wonderful. It's yeah. a wonderful thing that they see Jackson and of course, they know who he is, and sure. that he's so appreciated. And so that's kind of neat company you were in there. It was. Oh, yeah. And also, <laughs> next to me was Senator Mel Martinez, who's from Florida. Sure. Uh, he had a biography, an autobiography. And, um, you know, so we were chatting because we were right next to each other. And he he's asked me, which are your books? And I said, this on Jackson. And he said, oh, yeah. And he started. And I said, you know, a lot of people don't realize what Jackson did and who he is. And he said, of course I know who Jackson is and what he did. Yeah. It's funny, in, in the Beltway, in the, mm -hmm. the Beltway, he's, he's well known. Yes. And he's getting more well known by the minute because of what's going on with all these confirmation hearings. Well, yes. I have another story. Ah, tell me. Tell me I was going to maybe say it tonight. You can say it tonight, too. <laughs> um, so Patrick Leahy, frequently mentions Jackson. And I quote him in the book because at Chief Justice Roberts' confirmation hearings, yeah. Leahy said that Jackson was his, maybe, I, I don't know if he said it was his most favorite or one of his favorite justices. So when Eric Holder was nominated to be Attorney General, and you probably saw this because it was, yeah, sure. um, Leahy put out this press release and said that Eric Holder was in the model, Attorney General model of Robert Jackson. So I thought, okay, I'm going to send him a book. So my friends said, you don't send to Washington because there's, it gets lost in the anthrax mm -hmm. um, screening. Well, I don't know what happened here. This You got through this. Well, that went to the Supreme Court. Yeah, okay. Maybe I it's see. different, but I apparently see. with, con I don't know, they have quite the screening that goes on and it takes a long time. So I sent it to his office in Vermont. And three weeks later, I got a personal letter from him. A little note about how he enjoyed the book, and his wife enjoyed the book, and thank you for sending it to me. Isn't that wonderful? It was, and, I, I, and what I was going to say tonight, I don't know if I'll remember to do it, but you know, Scalia, Leahy, they're on different ends of the political spectrum. And to have these two leaders, very influential people, who admire Jackson. It's, it, it really says something wonderful about Jackson yeah, yeah. and his legacy. And, but there it was, you know, just really personal experience. Well, you should send one to to Holder. Me. Oh, maybe I should. You're that. right, because this is your, you, this you is should know about this guy. Since he's That's right. And why not? Good idea. Uh, as, I, as I've said several <laughs> times, when Kay Buffalmane suggested this mm -hmm. idea, I'm Mr. P.T. Barnum. I said, oh, I ain't gonna work. But what, you gotta know, what the heck. Mm -hmm. Send two books out. Next thing you know, we have everybody but O'Connor and Kennedy, and likely they'll both be here this summer. So we'll have this. We'll have oh, the, good. We'll have the full Monty. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Well, it is, it is kind of great. And, uh, well, it is kind of great. What else should I, what else is you, Tonight, the question no doubt will be asked after you get done explaining all that you've done. What's what's the legacy of Jackson to you? What's the walk away from oh. this whole experience? Well, you know that's a person that on a personal level. Jackson so much reminds me of my grandparents, and I dedicated the book to my grandparents mm -hmm. because he was about their age and certainly their generation, um, and. A lot about his philosophy and the way he looked at life and his values were what my grandparents had and what they passed on to me. So 
when I, one thing about him that really I believe, and I was taught this, is what he thought about education and about learning. And though he didn't have a lot of formal education, he certainly educated himself and believed that that was the way to get ahead in life and that was the way to make yourself better. And he lived that and it did make him better and his life trajectory shows that, it proves it. So in a way it's a confirmation for me of a value that I have and that I was raised with and here's an illustration of it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so he's glad? inspiring. Yeah. Am I glad I did it? Yeah, worthwhile experience? It was very worthwhile. I like what I do for a living because I love to learn things. Mm -hmm. And I did not know very much about Jackson. I didn't know that much about the era, the, er the period of time that he um, influenced and about all the things that happened while he was in the Roosevelt administration, all that. And I really learned a lot because I, in order to write the book, I had to take a history course, yeah. um, independent study, on all of that. Nuremberg, uh, just so much that I learned that doesn't even show up in the book, but now it's inside me. And, you know, there's a lot of personal gratification in educating yourself about something you didn't know before. Do you suspect, uh, as you're moving on to your next project and then your next project, uh, that I mean, back up on experience. We have had Joe Persico here, mm -hmm. uh, and who's written a number of historical yeah. books. And he wrote a book on Nuremberg, mm -hmm. and, and it was. Terrific. But he found that uh, pausing in the sequence of things to go back, to refresh, to even give his presentation on one of the books he did, you know, a few years ago, was not very easy. Uh, I, I, do you think is that, is that a normal course of things in an author as you move on to your next subject? And that's like, and somebody says, oh, by the way, can you come and do oh. a presentation on Jackson? Uh, and I know we're fast forwarding three, four years from now. But. Well, there's details that you forget, especially, for example, now I'm immersed in the Civil War, and I'm learning all about the Civil War, things I didn't know. That's where my mind is. So to get ready for this, right. um, I did have to stop doing that book for a few days and shift back and look at all my notes and look at reread re my book actually, um, just to get myself back into that mental groove right. of Jackson mm -hmm. and to remember uh, the things that I learned about Jackson. So I guess that's what he meant. You yeah. know, it's just any any body of knowledge if you don't use it for a little while, you re you have to refresh your memory. How did you know when you had all that you needed to do the right to book? <laughs> um, I had. Actually, my problem was different. I had to stop doing research because I would have kept going on and on because I was interested. And I had a deadline, partly because of you. <laughs> because, True. you know, you wanted these books. So I had to finish by a certain time in order to have those books published. Um, that was very difficult for me to say, I can't do any more research. I have got to stop and start writing this book. Um, so My fault. It is your fault, but you know what? It's a good thing you did it because I probably would still be doing the research. <laughs> I was, I was, I'm not in that world, but I'm having dealt with a number of authors who've been here. I asked that same question because I'm curious. Is it Persico's answer was, "Well, I got a shoebox, uh. and the shoebox is full and done." Oh, you know that that's sort of the mindset. Then I go on. Then I got to write. Mm -hmm. John's gonna John Barrett's researching and researching and researching and researching, and I don't know when whenever he's able to say enough to do that ultimate biography. I don't know. Well, there's a trap. There's a trap. You can get so involved in the research, and there's 280 boxes of personal papers down there in mm -hmm. the Library of Congress. You could go on forever, and you it's a trap. You're so fascinated. There's just more and more and more and different ways, different paths to go investigate. And at some point, you just have to say, hold on, I have to stop this. Right. I have to write the book. And I, I read something that David McCullough wrote about that. You know, he's done all these great books. Mm -hmm. He said that. He said, you have to stop yourself from doing research and write. And I knew exactly what he meant. Right. I, had, I had somebody say to me, you have to stop and write this and have it finished by this date, and that's what stopped me. Mm -hmm. 
It's amazing. You're amazing. You've done something for us that we can't thank you enough to do. Seriously. And, and vice versa. Yeah, it's, 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 it's worked really I, well. And like I say, I can't be happier as one of the founders of this organization to have a, a book that you can pull off the shelf and somebody walks through and said, tell me more. Because we never had that. Or you had, you had this, you know, a book, in the Gerhard book, God bless it, because it was it. Yeah. But it's, 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 it's a lot of meat and... It's just a lot too. The casual reader won't wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily pick it up, and the fact that you're able to find the pictures you found and put the uh, captions to the pictures and be able to do all that, which adds so much value. Thank you. Well, you know, of course, none of this would have happened without the Jackson Center. I mean, all those photographs, just for one example. Mm -hmm. I, I I wouldn't have had access to those, and that they made the book. Yeah. So. And not to, I'm going to be talking tonight about other things from the archives that I used. Without that, there's just not that insight into Jackson as a person. I couldn't have written the same book. The so. pictures are only as good as the context of which someone puts them in. <laughs> let, us, let us say thank you.